at the uh, ambulance service uh, headquarters here in Wilde. Now, already there's a lot of activity, but you know, when you're on the road, there's always a lot of activity. And uh, these people are always here. They're always the first to respond to you. Now, with me, I have Shelly Chase. Shelly is a paramedic. Now, I, I want you to see what's the first thing. Good morning, Shelly. How are you? Hi, good morning. I'm well. And you? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Now, I am keen to find out all about the operations here. I know we do not have the time for you to take me through all of this here. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I just want to tell us exactly uh, this takes to the day operations of the service here. Okay, so thanks for coming and featuring us um, on the show this morning. So the emergency ambulance service has been here for the last 38 years and we are part of a system where the system starts from the time the person calls the dispatcher, it starts with the dispatcher and he or she is an emergency medically trained dispatcher and um, they take what is going on with you Right? We have a problem there where we just want to give you what is happening and not tell us um, exactly what is happening, the location, we give a call back number because there are these things called pre-arrival instructions because yes, we're going to come to you, but you're already there with the victim and you can actually start to help until we arrive. So the first part of the system is dispatch. Dispatch them trial first, they call to us, the EMTs and the paramedics who actually come to you. We arrive, deal with you what is necessary, take you to hospital, pre-alerting, accident and emergency, what is going on, taking you there safely and transferring care to the accident and emergency. So basically that's it. Now you mentioned EMT and paramedics. Sure. So I want to re-clarify those terms first. Okay, so EMT stands for Emergency Medical Technician. That's the first or basic level of care for persons who are actually on the road where they provide basic pre-hospital care. And basic doesn't just mean basically putting a plaster on a wound. <laughs> that can go from bandaging, from offering counseling, to extricating you from a vehicular accident, to much more. And paramedic, the advanced trained personnel like myself, where we do a bit more, give medication, read ECGs, and, and actually collaborate with it hospital personnel and tell you what is going on and stabilize you a bit more than ENT but we both work together and you have to be an ENT before advancing to a paramedic. Now that then should reassure the public that when they see the ambulance come that you have trained personnel that yes. are able to assess the situation and assist in these situations. Yes we have very well skilled, educated, and experienced person from myself. So for me, this year is 28 years for me. I started quite young, I won't say hello. Probably school. Ha <laughs> I agree with you, I'm now 20. Actually, no, I started at the age of 19, and this year is 28 years, so maybe we're putting the map. But we have some persons here who've been doing this for 32 and 33 years, and they're still active. And we have some babies who started four months ago. Oh. So what we always say is anybody can help, just do the course which is a Barbados Community College certificate course, all right, pass it. All right, and apply to any of the ambulance services and barbers. As you know, the emergency ambulance service is a public service in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, but they're also a private ambulance service who also have EMTs right up with them as well. So once you call for ambulance, be assured that you have your in the hands of skilled, well experienced and motivated personnel. Now, of course, you're pressing to action in so many different situations. Yes. Like whether it's from home or uh, the other accident. Ha, ha, has there ever been a situation mm -hmm. where you felt that the challenge or you felt so overwhelmed and you wonder about, okay, can, can I really handle this situation? So, um, so this, I guess this is a personal question. Yes, for, for, for. Um, so there are times um, where you get to think because you see things that like, okay, you're trained for everything, but still there's some new everything that you're not accustomed to. You get to, get to, get to certain cases and you're like, wow, for a minute, two minutes, like how on earth did this happen? And then you snap into it, and then your professional saying takes over, and you handle it accordingly. So I'm human, so of course there are things that would actually shock you, touch you emotionally, but all in all, I've been able to handle it with the help of God. Now you mentioned you have the experienced ones, but you also have some young ones, some new ones. I saw one of your interns 
that's a short while ago. So that's an intern from the um, hospital. So the hospital has this relationship with the University of West Indies where you have medical students who get a bit of the field experience before actually becoming a doctor. And how does this field experience help them? Because uh, I, I know, I guess, to see what's happening will help them to better understand. But how, does, how do you then help them to build on uh, their experience? So, so today we have with us um, Azaria. Yeah. So she is new from UE and is still going through her training. So for most um, of these students, they've never been um, outdoors, they've never gone into a person's home, they've never seen what we call raw illness or raw trauma. So when you wait on the ambulance with us, we go into anything. As I was orientating her earlier, you can get a call where you have to go into a dilapidated house. You can go and see an elderly person with creepers on their skin. You can get a mask, you can get anything. So this experience will always stay with her. That whatever field or specialty she decides to go in, later being a doctor, she would always remember, yes, I might be seeing this person well packaged, all clean, but what is the genesis with this person? What was this person doing before? What is their social background? What is going on? So that's the purpose of having um, these new students or any of the doctors who are doing the the emergency medicine right with the ambulance to see what the field experience is, which is very, very important. And uh, let's talk about the importance of the ambulance service in the entire medical field now, because you mentioned it's important for the doctors to see what's happening on this end. Now, you are an important cog in the entire machinery. Uh, let's talk about how that really helps in the entire health service. So, so for me, uh, I was told um, in the 70s and the 60s there was a there was not an ambulance service. It was a case where people would go to the, uh, what we call the geriatric hospital, or the district hospital, pick up somebody, go and run. In 1984, it officially was launched as the emergency ambulance. And since then, we have been a staple on the healthcare system in, in Barbados. Should we take the ambulance service out of the Barbados, we don't know where we would be. Because we want, regardless of what happens, we always say, regardless if it is Prince or Papa, and something happens, 511 is always the number that is called. All right, because one, we see people from the community base, we're able to provide care from that point and stabilize them. There's so many cases that we stabilize, which allow the person to get to further care at the hospital. So the ambulance service is important. It is needed, but we can't do it on our own. Let me plug this here. We need the public's assistance, and they can help like this, Kashi. One, if you see an ambulance or any emergency vehicle on the road, don't assume what we're going to or what we're coming from, pull over. If you're on the highway which lane you're in, if you're the one closer to the barrier looking your remote pull, stop to the side. Let us through. You don't know what we're going to. We had a case many years ago where someone was called from one of our bothering services to a call. When they get there, it was their relative. It was their home that was unfair. So we're asking you, please, please, pull over. Or right, pull in over might not just be they're stopping or stopping around a bend or stopping that would make it difficult for us to come through because when we are driving, we want to make sure that we're driving defensive. We want to make sure that we think for what the other driver is going to do, but pull over in such a way that we can get through safely without touching you, touching mirrors, or causing a further accident. Two, when we come to your house, please put up your animals. It is your dog, it is your cat, it is your little pooch booty. We need you to put them away because one, we will be deemed as a stranger and most animals are protective to their owners and when they see us coming, they will attack us. And our first rule of thumb is that we must be safe first. Yes. If we are not safe, we can't help you. I always say this, catch this maybe your little pooky wooky, right? You may be ill, you may be sick. This animal might not understand that we are here to help. So as we come to you, they're gonna attack us and we can't work because we are unsafe, all right? And thirdly, listen to the dispatchers' questions when they call, right? Because one of the common emergencies that we have is diabetics whose blood sugar is really, really low. This happens suddenly for one reason or another, it happens. So maybe by just listening to dispatchers and listening to his or her directions, you can want a system with some mystery to eat or drink until we arrive, all right? And that would actually help them before we arrive. But please don't just say, what well, you're asking me all these questions for? This ain't necessary? Say the ambulance. And lastly, Barbadians, despite all the Google Maps, all the different things, we have difficulty getting directions from Barbadians. So we want to hear terms like north, south, left, 
Right, we don't want to hear it through the line up yonder by Miss Brown call. <laughs> we don't want to hear that because one, we found in a brief little survey that we were doing, we might have an ambulance available and we know there's always a, a bigger demand than supply. But if we have an ambulance coming to your granny, uh, Kashi, and you give us okay, we get by Miss Brown pipe, turn up yonder, you can't miss it. Mr. Brown went swift is outside there. You will really know that Mr. Brown was going to leave home before we get there and your swift is gone. And we found that with horrible directions, we, this delays us and we really found that our most critical oh. patients are the ones we had to have helter skelter for him. Oh. So we just want Barbadians to remember these things. We need to help you to help us. Yes, help us to help you. Alright, so I really want to thank you, uh, Shelly, a paramedic and one of many and uh, as we were speaking, one of the units just said, yes. what do you call it? So we call it an ambulance. Because I know that the press service called here is appliances. Yes, yes, uh, it's always in an ambulance. Right. And since we're clearing up terms, it's not ambulance woman, it's not ambulance man. It's ENT or paramedic. All right. All right. Or call us by our first names. I'm quite happy you're calling me Shelly. Everybody that knows me calls me Shelly. I'm not, um, I'm not fickle about that. Okay. All right. But just address us properly. Oh, one last thing we would like from business owners. So there's like this, it is now quarter past eight and we've already had one accident for the morning. We understand that world conditions are heavy and it's also wet. So we tend to find that we have more accidents. But lately it's been quite busy. Well, nearly every day it's busy. We're asking business owners, sometimes we get a, a brief period for lunch. If we go into your establishment and you see us there, sometimes we might just get a brief thing. A blade just by putting us at the head of the line. So we can get our snack or lunch you know, and get back to our job. So we would really like to see that sort of courtesy. We would really love it. And thank you in advance for that. All right, business folk, you heard that there? <laughs> Assist our EMTs and paramedics. Shelly, thank you very much for taking some time this morning. I know you were supposed to be on the road with that team, but I'm sure they'll probably swing back for you or something like that. But that's it, that's our third stop. We still have one more to make. We just took you through the emergency ambulance service. There's more coming your way, back to you, Morris.